Health is wealth, a phrase casually coined by our forefathers. But in this hustle and bustle of what we call life, in these busy streets, in these times when we as human beings take so much for granted, where life has become so mechanical and routine, these are the golden words which form the very basis of our survival. Survival which has relied so much on man-nature relationship from centuries back. Here in the state of Meghalaya, this relationship still plays an important role. This is a region so rich in its biodiversity that according to local folklore, when Hanuman was advised to fetch the Sanjeevni booty in order to save the mortally wounded Lakshman in the Ramayana, he flew to this very region and in his confusion eventually resorted to scooping up the entire mountain which has left these beautiful gorges which bear witness to the fact that this region abounds in a host of medicinal plants and herbs. The Khasi people, who are the descendants of an Austroasiatic group, are one of the principal tribes inhabiting this region so rich in its biodiversity. It is due to this richness and the inherent man-nature relationship that the Khasis have developed and carried on with an aged-old system of medicine which has helped in bringing this small community through centuries of disease and sickness to the present time without the interference of modern and developing medical facilities. This traditional form of medicine which is based on herbs and diet, offer a powerful yet gentle and effective way to heal with the least danger of side effects. Today, allopathy with its powerful drugs often create a toxic burden for the body, one that the liver is unable to eliminate and which impairs necessary organic physiological processes. However, the Khasis practice this ancient art of medicine which they follow not only because it carries along with it an age-old tradition but also because of its tried and tested effectiveness. บ่นกําตงอ่ะตีอิ่มวัดฉลาวบงไอ้โทษจะดะไว้ฮะจังดอนบัวงันรุงอิ่มบ่ได้บึงคลาอิ่มดอนบัวชูเช็ดปัดอ
improving blood circulation, pregnancy related problems and repairing weak nerves. These traditional healers are able to cure various other ailments. One example of this traditional form of healing can be seen in this case of a snake bite victim. These are cured by way of placing a cut on the area where the person has been bitten in order to draw blood. A medicinal stone is then placed on the cut which literally filters out the poison. The treatment for fractured bones is done by applying a paste to the affected area. This paste is a mixture of extracts from various medicinal plants and herbs like the pederia, allium and zingiber etc. The affected portion is bandaged and the bandage changed every 24 hours. A cast made out of bamboo is also used to protect the affected area. After the injured area is properly bandaged and put in a cast, the doctor applies massage and also checks whether the bones have been properly aligned. Dr. John Carduit is one such name that is highly respected among the medicine men. Hailing from Thangsning, East Khasi Hills, he has been practicing this ancient art for a long time now and is one of the most experienced and well-known among the medicine men. He holds his clinic both in Thangsning and in Shillong, which is the capital of Meghalaya. Ya, kini kembat awai. Kibangi penengkam. Haki bentar ki cempang ki berpair, ki berpair. Kibangi ngalak betai mentan day. But on day tangkat taruh ini, sempat awai kibadan hari kesi, kibadan bon rukam kini cero kampeng hiak. Kibadan haka nambar ubri ni barok khat. Wai pu wai no ay kembat awai kesi. Am terai bau untip lut ia barok khat. Dan ki batip untu, ki batip ikan ni. Tekum tangi ni kembat awai kibadan hari kesi. Kilong kita berhasil yang kita way, kita balak mempun kau. Kum kita cumpang kita eh, kita eh. Kum kita kita balak kedau, neng. Kum kita kita cumpang bampong. Dah haki dawai start teng teng lah sistem mempun kia iki. Dah hendai apa? Yede ni kita cumpang bampong kita kita angkat sah. Dah kata kemud kita dan bahari. The Northeastern Biodiversity Research Cell was formed by a group of research scholars from various departments of the Northeastern Hill University in order to conduct research on the validity and scope of these medicinal plants and herbs which have been said to cure many serious ailments including cancer, paralysis and heart diseases. Their research has revealed that some of the natural ingredients which are used by these traditional healers like the Eupatorium adenophorum, the adiantum, and the Lantana Cassiana, etc., do have scientific medicinal properties. First, these leaves are dried or used fresh, and their chemical components extracted through a process called solvent extraction or steam distillation by way of using the Soxlet apparatus. This is a soxlet apparatus and we use this mainly for extraction of plants, mainly we go for freshly. And as you see here, this is a compound whereas in the dung portion we keep the solvent. As soon as we are on the current, then the, <coughs> the solvent which is there it gets heated up and when it gets heated up, then the vapor will rise, it will come through this tube and then it will condense here in the condenser. As soon as it condense here, it will get, it become cold and then it will turn into a liquid and that liquid will get into this compound. This extract is then run through a thin layer chromatography plate. The bioassay is also made in which this compound is tested on different lab specimen in order to determine whether this compound has any disease fighting property. The next process involves the high performance liquid chromatographer. We are here in the Northeastern Biodiversity Research Cell premises. This room houses one of our analytical instruments. 
It is called the High Performance Liquid Chromatography System. Briefly, in layman's language, this system, which we have here just behind me, is meant for the separation of plant chemicals, biochemicals, as they call, uh, from various uh, plants that we are currently investigating. Now, the cell, as uh, our coordinator must have briefed you, uh, has a number of activity, a number of priorities. The major priority of the activity of the cell is the documentation of medicinal plants. According to the World Conservation Union, one out of every eight known plant species is threatened with extinction. In fact, more than one-fifty of the known species of medicinal plants in India are threatened or endangered. With this scenario, it is of utmost importance for this practice to survive that there has to be a sustainable growth. With this in mind, Dr. John Kadivit also cultivates most of his medicinal herbs at Thangsling. This is in the direction of a positive step towards the conservation of these medicinal plants and also to the sustainable development of the practice of traditional medicine. Some of the plants being cultivated in Dr. John's garden are the Bryophyllum, the Taxus baccata, Panax pseudoginseng, the Eucalyptus, etc. Nagaliang jong kibrio, ki pom patari ki ding, nang taki penjat ya kemeriang, dia kum taki di kembar la nang duna, dia apa la duna ya kini kembar doai, ni sistem ha, dia kini kembar kidan kimdan tanghan ya ri, kimdan tanghan ya kacaka tangsening la nak kimdan hatra kacaka haboi, kidan la kacong kacong, kini kembar doai, dia kini kembar doai bangi pendan kamang ni, ki badan ki bawan ra na boi. Iria, nang tak kira ni kawan rak, nang tanya east kasi, west kasi, nang tanya war, war, kini kiri, eh kembat awai. Kira ni langkah langkah cong cong langkah cong rukami, eh kini kiri kembat awai. Nyuwan rak nang kelang sulbang cong kiri kasi buat cong dia. Ban kelak ban sinar awai. Kumbang ala batai mentan, eh nomor tangi kelang sisa kibo bahar dua tak. The NBRC is also conducting extensive research work into the conservation of rare medicinal plants, herbs and orchids through the development of a tissue culture lab. In this tissue culture lab, the tissues of these rare plants are cultivated with the help of controlled light and temperature settings. There are about 60,000 plant species or more which have been documented in India. And Northeast has about 10,000 plant species which have been documented. But this is a very small amount because a large number of plant species remains undocumented. Apart from tissue culture, the NEBRC is also contributing towards the documentation of the various herbs and plants which are in the danger of facing extinction. You know, whenever we go for any field collection, especially for medicinal plants, we take along with us the herbal practitioners. So he had to find the plant on the spot. And we collect these plants, and we also take photographs of those plants. So we bring, we brought this, this medicinal plant to the laboratory. We try it in the oven or any electrical device. Then after drying it, we, we take the head of this absorbing paper, we fold it, and we put in the heavy press. 
He appears sometimes, but this is uniform, spec uniformly. We mount it in the heavenly ship. Okay? And in this note, they have the flower protect from which area? The family and which party and what type of habitat? And where are these plants are from locally? And who collect this plant? And this particular sheep we place it here. One very interesting fact about this medicinal plant going by the local name Tarkang Kelai and botanical name Adiantum used by these traditional healers to cure ailments related to gallbladder.